Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our retro throwback review of the Motorola Admiral. This is a messaging smartphone that came out in 2011, and it's uh, fairly unique for being quite rugged, but at the same time offer decent components for the time. We're going to also visit whether or not this is still a uh, okay choice as a backup device here in 2017. So this phone came out in 2011, and it was military specified to be drop, shock, and uh, solar radiation proof. It's also uh, rainproof but it's not submergible underwater. You can see we have a vertical keyboard that's interestingly textured and domed at either side, which is quite reminiscent of Motorola curves and uh, other messaging devices at the time. And the layout here is fairly spacious as well as backlit to type on and lower lit environments. The screen itself measures 3.1 inches diagonally and it's a Corning Gorilla Glass coated capacitive touchscreen display that's fairly sensitive to tap on. And although it's not QHD, it does offer a respectable 5 um, 258 ppi, which is still pretty decent as far as viewing back images and uh, movies are concerned, although at 3 inches, again, it's a little small if you are planning on using this for extensive web browsing and gaming. Underneath the hood, we have access to a single-core 1.2 GHz processor, which is the Snapdragon S2, coupled with 512 megabytes of RAM, and on the back, there's a 5-megapixel autofocus-enabled camera with LED flash. These were all fairly mid- to high-tier specs for the time, and 2017, they no longer are you know, outstanding, but still performs decently in the main UI, as well as for handling single apps one at a time. Taking a closer look at the hardware first, the biggest omission on the Admiral is a front-facing camera. It's a little disappointing, it means that you can't use it for video chatting purposes. However, the speakerphone here remains loud and clean sounding, and below the screen there's access to a capacitive backlit keys that take you into the menu, home, back, and search. There's also an ambient light sensor that turns on the backlight automatically in low-lit environments. These are, again, pretty sensitive to tap on, and they offer haptic feedback, which means it vibrates each time that you tap on it, just like a real button. However, However, they are spaced a little too close with the top row of the keyboard for my tastes, and going back to a physical keyboard on this phone when I was typing, uh, occasionally I would hit accidentally one of the capacitive keys and trigger something that I didn't want to do. So perhaps uh, a real or uh, physical beat keys on this design would have been a little stronger, especially as a rugged phone. Regardless, again, the keyboard is you know very good for a vertical keyboard. It's not quite as large as a horizontal sliding keyboard, but if you do do a ton of texting, as well as emailing, and browsing the web and entering long strings of text, it remains one of Motorola's better keyboards, in my opinion. So if you are typing um, through long documents, this is still a decent option for that. Below the keyboard, there's access to another uh, microphone, which you can see is noise canceling and offers quite a wide speaker grill here. And again, it picks up sound pretty well, even in outdoor environments, which is good because the target audience, again, is meant for construction workers, people who are always traveling and might need a more rugged and durable device. So the sides of the phone is crafted out of a soft touch rubber material which makes it easier to grip and there's also ports that covers a micro USB port for charging it takes about two hours to completely charge and afterwards the phone will last you for about a day and a half before you need to recharge it again using a uh, pretty large battery which I'll show you guys in a moment there's also an interesting push to talk key which is almost a relic of a past today but this phone originally came out on sprint service so it's a CDMA device not GSM and you can t if you have a compatible device you can push to talk just like walkie-talkie services um, you know, based on your, on your service. There's also a volume rocker, which is pretty tactile and responsive, and on the very top, there's access to the power on-off switch, another flap that covers a 3.5mm headphone jack, and there's also a quick uh, key that uh, mutes the speaker uh, at a quick tap. The other side features access to a camera shutter key, which takes images with the autofocus camera, which produced some decent shots in our testing, even for 2017. It's by no means going to replace your full-time camera, but for some emergency shots, it captures a good amount of light, and it's definitely usable to share with social media, as well as, uh, again, capture those quick moments that you want to keep. The back is also made out of this textured soft-touch material, and what I kind of like about this design, going back to it, is its shape. You can see it's almost like a wedge, so if you pop it on a, on a desk here, it almost makes the screen come up at an angle. It's easier to see and kind of type on, as well as for viewing some quick images and videos if you don't want to be holding the phone all the time. It's fairly compact, again, and, and easy to tote with you, despite having having a keyboard on the front. So if we kind of peel back the battery door on the very back here, it's fairly tight, but we have access again to that fairly large battery. There's also an extended battery that Motorola sold, and you can see that this one in particular had a 1,850 milliamp hour capacity, which is um, pretty decent for a relatively small and compact phone. 
So let's take a closer look at the UI next. Um, like most phones that Motorola came out in 2011, it runs on a lightly skinned version of Motorola Blur. The touchscreen here you tap on once and then you can tap on it again to either mute or unlock it as so. Um, it gives you a few additional widgets that Motorola has designed but remains fairly loyal to the original version of Android 2.3 Gingerbread, and it was the same type of skin that we found on devices like Atrix. Speaking of, here's a quick size comparison with this phone that offers a slightly more powerful dual-core processor, but the same amount of um, overall performance and speed in day-to-day -day use. And again, with a 1.2 gigahertz processor, most of your daily tasks, even here in 2017, can still be performed without too many issues. In terms of connectivity, we're talking about the typical Wi-Fi, there's GPS, there's Bluetooth, albeit version 2.1 instead of the 4.0 or 5.0 that we're used to now, but it still works without any major problems. Again, we see evidence of some of Motorola's proprietary widgets in the form of some weather applications, some social media notices that you can cycle through and uh, program to set up with Facebook or Twitter. If I can long tap on the screen, I can take a look at some of these um, other ones that they've designed. Not all of them are completely useful for everyone, but you can select, and it's always nice to have a bit of uh, options options to, to select from. Uh, the phone itself has 4 gigabytes uh, of built-in storage, expandable via a micro SD card slot, which means that you don't need to pop in a memory card right out of the box if you want to start taking a few extra images. And we can see the interface for the camera here. It's pretty easy to use. I can tap on more details by sliding through this vertical uh, bar that gives me options like resolution, autofocus, as well as turning the flash on or off. I can change the profile um, as well as the saturation level and digitally zoom by using this bar on the side here. It's pretty easy and fast to focus. You can see that without any memory card inserted, you can still take around 900 images with a five megapixel sensor, uh, which is decent. And I can again snap a shot. And you know, the nice thing about uh, having some built-in memory is the same goes with apps. You can download a few without having to worry about the memory getting full or having to pop in the card right out of the box, which is nice. So here's a sample image I took in relative low light, and you can see that details are still fairly good as far as zooming in. Colors are pretty accurate. Of course, we're looking at a painting here. This is an outdoor shot. And again, saturation and colors are accurate for a 5 megapixel sensor. Uh, the flash tends to overexpose your shots a little bit if you're too close to your objects, but uh, all in all, really not that bad. It also captures videos up to 720p resolution, although uh, it doesn't have an optical image stabilization. So if you are shaking or turning the camera rapidly around, the quality of the video isn't going to be quite as strong. If we talk a little bit about the call quality next, again, it's still quite important for any phone. Again, this is a typical Motorola blur layout, and there's haptic feedback on each of the controls as well. I can tap through my profiles, my contacts, and then pretty easily dial through. Reception is quite strong on Sprint's network here in the Seattle region, and I was consistently uh, in a place where I had around three bars or so when I had the phone turned on, and call quality was also loud and clean sounding. The microphone did a nice job even in outdoor environments, so no complaints in that regard. So let's take a closer look at the web browsing experience next. I can access that just by tapping on the bottom here. This is a WebKit-based browser that Motorola has done a little bit of tweaking on that gives me options like tab browsing. I can open up new windows as well as bookmarks, and it renders pages fairly well, even complex ones such as the New York Times. Let's do a quick test of that next. We can see that text is so fully legible, although a little small on a smaller screen, and ads are also loading in addition to interactive elements. I can zoom in and multi-touch, everything feels pretty fluid without any uh, checkerboard patterns for the most part. So again, even for web browsing in 2017, it still seems to keep up. Obviously not quite as snappy or instantaneous as more uh, powerful and top-of-the-line phones, but you know it does work, and that's the important thing. The accelerometer can also be used to get a slightly larger screen that uh, you may want to use for more complex pages or viewing back images and videos. You can load up mobile YouTube directly from the browser, or you can use the uh, application that Motorola has bundled it with, and this app, although it's fairly simple, still does work for loading up videos up to 720p resolution. I can also upload videos directly using this app, and it's very optimized for a device like this, so it's pretty quick to load up the videos despite a slower processor, and I can scrub between parts of the video relatively quickly as well. So no complaints, again, in that department. We can see in the all apps that, again, these drawers have been reorganized by Motorola, so they've been recategorized. I can tap on the top here to add new groups 
to sort through my apps in a more uh, cohesive way. And uh, you can see that we have access to a few bloatware here and there installed by Sprint and Motorola. And examples of this include Quick Office, which allows me to quickly edit as well as create Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents, and also view back PDFs. So if we look at some recent documents, for instance, here's one that I was typing out earlier. And I can also zoom in, of course, and this was a quick test that I did using the keyboard. You can see that it's actually pretty accurate and easy to use. Um, again, it has auto correction in terms of the software, so it's tactile, it's responsive, and I had no real complaints as far as typing out longer messages, documents, and emails. So it remains a pretty good processing um, device if you are entering lots of text or if you are messaging centric. So other apps on here have also been tweaked by Motorola, including things like the alarm clock app. Um, not the most you know elegant thing in the world, but it works. Some sprint services like Mobile Sync, Mobile Hotspot, which you can use your phone as a Wi-Fi network, which works pretty well. There's also a NASCAR kind of uh, app on here. Phone Portal by Motorola that allows you to manage your device online. And there is access to some sprint music services at Telenav, which is a paid turn-by-turn -turn navigational service, but you can always use the free Google Maps if you want to. And there's also access to the standard Play Store. So you can still install most of the apps that you would want to. Um, not, not all of the most current and newest apps will 100% uh, you know, run and super smoothly or install without any problems on an older 2.3 operating system. But uh, for the most part, at least you do have access to the Play Store as opposed to the older you know, Google Marketplace. So it still works fairly well as far as app support. You can still find a fair selection of productivity and uh, games that you would want to run on an Android. Android device. So that's basically our look back at the Motorola Admiral. I'd say that in 2017 it still is a decent uh, phone, surprisingly. It has a pretty snappy performance in the regular day-to-day -day use. Um, you know, it only slows down significantly if you have a ton of web pages open or if you're multitasking with lots of different apps, it's definitely going to sl slow down because it only has 512 megabytes of RAM. But the keyboard is excellent. The screen, although a little small, gets fairly bright and it's sensitive with a good PPI still as a budget device, and call quality is excellent. So if you're looking for a slightly more rugged keyboard phone, if you are giving it to a child or someone who needs a real physical keyboard, maybe as an alternative to a BlackBerry that runs on Android, and you need one that's a relatively low cost, I would say if you can find this for under, let's say, 40 bucks, it still remains a decent value. You can check out more details about this phone in our official retro throwback article, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This was our look back review of the Motorola Admiral in 2017.